beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. Within this guide I will be sharing my tried and tested recipe and methods for creating an American cream owl along with my usual hints and tips. So let's get started. I guess you have already realised based on the title screen that this is very much a summer beer style, but if you are not from the United States then this may not be a style that you're familiar with. So let's now start off by running through some quick notes on the style. Cream Ale is an American born beer style and despite its name does not contain any dairy or lactose. The word cream is simply marketing jargon, but do not let that bother you. American Cream Owls are characterised by simply how easy drinking they are and are rather like what would happen if a German Pilsner and a British Owl got overly friendly and had a baby. Do not worry though, there are some great flavours to be had here, especially if you add a little fruit for backing flavouring, which is a great mix for such a refreshing beer style. Lime is by far the most popular, and this is given as an option within my recipe. Here is a sneak preview of my recipe's vital statistics. This recipe offers just over 5% ABV, along with a slightly higher level of colour compared to a classic cream owl, but this is done in the name of flavour, and it is a popular choice for craft breweries too. With a BUGU ratio of just 0 0.30, this is certainly not a bitter beer, and follows that whole easy drinking mythos. This recipe, like all of my shared recipes, is written by me and can be found in full within the video's description, which is underneath the video window when viewed on a desktop computer. You will also find a link to the full recipe on Brewfather, which can be used free of charge with some restrictions. For the very best results and so that you are actually brewing the recipe as intended, I strongly suggest that your initial steps will be to convert the recipe before ordering in your ingredients. I have an easy guide to doing this with Brewfather on my channel, as shown on screen now. Within this video, this recipe is being brewed using a Gen 4 Brazilla 65 to the volume of 21 litres, or approximately 5.55 US liquid gallons. But as part of a conversion process, this can be scaled and shaped to suit your own brewing system and volume requirements. Recipe conversion is an essential part of the process for the intended results. Do note that this applies to all recipes that you could brew, not just mine. Do not worry too much if you're a beginner, but for the very best results you should plan your water profile ahead. Tweaking your water profile for this recipe will enable you to balance it, leading to a better end flavour. With the cream ale style it is normal to use the balance profile, like the one shown on screen now, which allows flavours to shine equally. I use this water profile throughout this recipe's development and would highly recommend it. Let's get brewing, and this starts with doming in, otherwise known as adding your grain to your brewing system. Shown on the left of the screen are this recipe's vital statistics along with our grain bill. I started by adding just the pale ale malt which was milled. This malt is essentially our canvas of flavour and is responsible as our main fermental content for this recipe. Once this was all added and is stirred in well, I then moved on to the next step. This is to then add in the flaked maize and flaked wheat. These are still stirred in, but I am careful to not let it go too deep into the mash, as both of these ingredients can make things sticky and can compromise our recirculation flow, even at these levels. Both of these flaked ingredients are not milled, because there is simply no need. The flaked maize is used in this recipe to add in some moderate sweetness and smoothness, but its main function is to lower the body of the beer to aid in drinkability. Whereas within this recipe the flaked wheat is used to aid in a crisper mouthfeel and to impart a little flavour. Some cream ale recipes will omit the flaked wheat, but the flaked maize is always along for the show. It was then time to start the mash, so I selected the mash profile on the Brusilla Gen 4 controller. For this mash I used a schedule of 67 degrees Celsius for mash in and 75 degrees Celsius for mash out. See on screen for imperial measurements and the schedule times. This schedule allows for some extra sweetness and lifts our final gravity to an estimated level of 1.009, which is around the level that I feel that is the sweet spot for this style. As you can see, we have a beautiful wart forming here, which will be diluted by our sparge, so despite this being a touch darker than the BJCP's colour suggestion, it is still a light and bright colour all the same. After the mash, I lifted up the grain basket and did the sparge, which as usual I performed manually by hand, ensuring that there was good coverage over the entire grain bed below the top plate. Whilst I was sparging, I sent the brusilla to start heating to the boil, so after the sparge, the system was already coming towards boil temperature. The bruiser soon hit the boil, so let's take a look at the boil schedule. 
Firstly, I'm using a 30 minute boil here. There is simply no need for anything more and the benefits in malt flavour that are not boiled off make it well worth it, irrespective of the time saving. For further information about modern boil timings, please consult the video shown on screen now on my channel. In terms of hops, we have three hop additions for this brew that start at the 15 minute stage with a minimum amount of hops in keeping with the style. These hops will add bitterness, flavour and aroma, all in small amounts. Centennial is essentially super cascade and contributes citrus, aromatic pine and floral notes. Siles is a great partner and offers its own classic distinctive flavour and aroma that is classic for lager styles that consists of earthy, herbal and spicy qualities. Unlike most American beer styles though, this one is not led by hops. During the boil, I recirculated boiling hot wort through my counterflow chiller, readying it for the transfer stage. This is a Camelot converted Grainfather G30 counterflow chiller that I'm yet to upgrade because it is still working well, but perhaps one day I will replace it with something more fancy. After the cooling stage I then started transfer into my fermenter and pitched my yeast of choice. For this recipe I've tried a few different yeast options during the recipe's development and have settled on using Omicus Lutral yeast finding that the best results are found for this style with a fermentation temperature of 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. There are various other choices you could make here in terms of yeast selection that include cream ale yeast blends that include both lager and owl yeast. Also within this selection would be neutral American owl yeast or German owl yeast. However, I just have to say that Omega's Lutra continues to impress me with its very clean lager-like profile when used at lower temperatures with no need for pressure either. This profile works very well for cream ale, plus as an added bonus, the average fermentation time with this recipe at this lower temperature was just three days across the course of my small test batches and this one keg size batch too. If you would prefer a more owl-like profile that is still very clean, then with Lutri you can simply increase the temperature to about 30 degrees Celsius, the equivalent of 86 degrees Fahrenheit, or beyond. This could net you a fermentation time of just over one day with Lutra. When it comes to fruit choice for this style, there are simply many options that work well on questions around fruit choices for numerous styles are very common for me to receive an answer, but do keep in mind that this style works very well without fruit too. Fruit is certainly an enhancement option for many, but not for all. Make your own choices here. Naturally fruit is a question of taste, but for myself and my taste testers, this style works best with either lime or raspberry, which seem to be the best sellers in commercial varieties of this style too. The trick, however, is not to add too much so that the fruit is there alongside the other flavours from this style rather than dominating it. For use within this recipe, I recommend using 1 kilo of lime, which is 2.2 pounds. If you are not a fan of lime, then you could use the same amount of raspberry or another type of fruit for that matter as a good starting point to dialing in the flavour profile for your own taste. However, when experimenting outside of this recipe with lime, I would suggest first scaling down the recipe to a lower volume rather than committing to a full batch for testing. Fruit quality is also an important factor, as is ease of use. A high quality puree like this one, for example, makes your process very easy, as all you need to do is simply pour it into your fermentation vessel. Check my other videos that involve fruit for how to prepare fresh fruit. I suggest adding the fruit to your fermentation vessel when you are between 5 to 10 points away from your protected final gravity. This will increase the flavour of your fruit and also have a nice clean effect too. Some, like myself, prefer to jump trub or transfer to a secondary fermentation vessel before adding fruit to be on the safe side, but others do not bother and take the chance. The choice is yours here. Let's now look at the final beer from this finalised tried and tested recipe, starting with the poor footage. This beer has been in the keg for about two weeks at this point, at an average temperature of 5 degrees Celsius, which is the equivalent of 41 degrees Fahrenheit. This has been under 12 psi of pressure, which is 0.83 bars for this time, and I'm using this pressure for serving too. No attempts have been made to clear this beer, so what you see here are the natural results, just how I like them. This recipe can be brewed with or without the lime, with no consequences or changes needed. In my experience, the addition of fruit certainly is a very nice enhancement. So let's now talk tasting notes with the lime. Let's now talk tasting notes for the finished beer. Aroma. The aroma here is one of crisp freshness along with citrus, pine and lime. Flavour. 
very fresh and clean citrus on entry with clean and fresh lime and a little pine on the finish. As you get further down the glass there are hints of sars hops that appear with their very distinctive lager like delicate flavours that are herbal and floral. My notes for this beer are as follows. This beer is very easy drinking and the average drinker tends to take more than one before moving on to something else. The flavours are all very fresh and clean and make for a very refreshing combination. My final impression is that this is a nice sessionable thirst quencher that is ideal as a crowd pleaser, especially during the hotter times of the year. A lot of work has gone into this recipe to develop it into the great shape that it is in now. If you do decide to brew this, then I would suggest that you brew it as is the first time, and only tweak after you've experienced the original if you feel that you need to. Either way, I would love to hear from all of you that have brewed this one for your thoughts. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group, and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store, as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!